Hey guys, El Flamingo here, your coach of Forex Attack. Today we have a video that has been uh, put on the back burner for a little bit since Scarlet and Violet come out, and that is a review of my season in the MDL. Uh, it was a off-season event, but but um, went for the normal length of a season and had a lot of really good coaches in it. Um, so yeah, with Scarlet, this was my last. Uh, draft league uh, for Sword and Shield um, and then pretty much a few days after the final happened here uh, we had the uh, Scarlet and Violet come out so I haven't really got around to doing um, anything to do with the uh, with, with, with this draft league since so I uh, thought I uh, finally had some time to get it out and I uh, yeah this is what so this is where we are so uh, MDL was an interesting draft league it uh, allowed you to have legacy moves, so um, things like Blastoise got Follow Me, um, Toxic was everywhere again. Um, so that was uh, it, it was different. Um, not knowing uh, all the the moves that, that a Pokemon uh, got, just just like I generally do playing playing standard BGC, but it also allowed some of the lower level restricted Mons like um, Zamazenta, not the Crown form, just just Zamazenta base Kyrim. Um, Necrozma, and also uh, a most of the mythical Pokemon. Uh, there was no um, the big metal dude. Can't remember his name. Mel Metal, and there was no Magina. But I think everything else was was fine. Um, I when I drafted my team, I did not take advantage of this at all. Um, a lot of my Pokemon are from Gen Eight, so there's not many legacy moves. And the Pokemon I drafted didn't really want to use their legacy moves, and I had no mythical or restricted either. Um, so uh, let's have a quick look at my team. So this is how my team ended um, at the end of the season. Um, I, I did a few drafts, uh, sorry, a few trades to kind of get me here. Uh, so I had the Colossal being sort of the, the cornerstone of my team, uh, G Max, because that chip damage is nutty. Um, I was trying to build my Quill Cold team that I used in series, uh, must have been series 9, which was uh, Quillfish, which I did have, but I ended up trading away. Colossal, Rillaboom, Bronzong, a Moltres, Gala, and Dragapult. Um, so I didn't get Dragapult, and I didn't get Moltres, Gala. I kind of went uh, Dragonite and um, Spectria to kind of fill, fill those two roles. Um, also had the Alolan Persian. I had the War Turtle for follow me, follow me support, but also had the Aqua Jet to hit into um, the Colossal. I ended up trading a Quillfish away for the Avalug. I had a Meansha that ended up trading away for the Hitmontop. And I'll go through my trades in a little bit. I had Wigglytuff and I had Leap, which helped um, you know redirect water attacks away from um, my Colossal. So let's go through the transactions. Uh, so my first trade I did within the first few weeks, um, I traded Morgrim for um, Persian. Uh, Persian gave me a faster fake out than Morgrim. Um, and I felt like I had three NFEs in my team between uh, Morgrim, Wartortle, and Lilip. So, and, and Morgrim wants to use um, Eviolite sometimes, but, but so does Wartortle. And, and so does Lilith. And there were weeks where I wanted to bring two of them and, and then I had to use Sash on something, but I had also a lot of Mons that wanted to use Sash. So um, I think going the Persian kind of helped me still control the stats through things like Snarls and Parting Shot. Uh, gave me a faster fake out um, and, and Icy Wind speed control support. So I, I think I was pretty happy with that. Both got fake tears as well. Pranks to fake tears versus fast fake tears. Um, so I didn't make any more trades all season. But I wish I had have made these trades earlier because it was just so much better for my team. Um, Miancho was good. Um, and Quillfish, I, I just never brought it. Like, I, if I was going to bring a water type, I wanted to bring Water Turtle just because it had Follow Me and still had Aqua Jet. Um, so I ended up trading Miancho for Hitmontop. That gave me a bit of roll compression. I still had Fake Out. Um, I didn't have as fast a Fake Out, but because I had the Persian, I still had a fast Fake Out more on my team. So I was okay. Um, Getting rid of the Meanshaw and bringing the hip on top. Still had wide guard, quick guard, that sort of stuff. But now I had intimidate on one mon. I had fake out and intimidate on one mon, um, and it was just bulkier, which I, I kind of wanted my my intimidate mon to be. Um, and then 
I got rid of Quillfish for Everlug, um, purely because um, I wanted to bolster my Trick Room mode, and um, yeah, Quillfish just weren't coming. And there was a few teams that Ice Types looked into, so these these were actually my pre-playoff uh, transactions. We got two, um, so those were my three transactions throughout the season. Uh, so let's go into my. Um, we'll go into each of my weeks. I'm just going to bring up. If I still have it, Matt's double league. Here we go. Okay. So we've got everyone's teams down here. So my first week was Burst. Um, good lad. Uh, so he had like a Genesec, Togekiss, Blastoise, Garchomp, Indeedy Mail, Blacephalon, Coferiga, Sneasel, Appleton, Lycanroc, Gun Tank. Um, he ended up bringing uh, Genesec, Togekiss, Blastoise, Garchomp, Blacephalon, and Sneasel. Um, and so I won the first game. Uh, I went Trick Room um, Colossal. Uh, so using War Turtle to help set up Trick Room. Um, and then uh, bringing in Colossal and getting a Bulldoze off with Bronzong. And then bringing Spectria in late game or, or Rillaboom in late game to, to, to clean up. Um, I ended up maxing Wigglytuff one game because it was in a pretty good position. But I kind of underestimated the amount of damage that I plus one Genesect, uh, a max Genesect did to, to Wigglytuff. It, it did like over 50% with a bug move, which is resisted. Um, so I think having, I could have done these uh, Wigglytuff EVs a bit better, maybe, um, uh, yeah, a bit more defense investment. Probably didn't need max HP because Wigglytuff's got a bloated HP stat. So I think that was a bit of a mistake there. Um, Rillaboom felt like kind of dead weight. Um, and, but that was just kind of the matchup. I, I found, like, Grassy Glide would have been good late game, but I think Spectria just, just felt better. Um, I, th I think that was one thing with, with Rillaboom throughout the season was, like, I'd bring it because it would have a good matchup into certain mons, but then my opponent wouldn't bring those Pokemon, so it was, it was kind of useless. Um, I last minute changed, um... Mental Herb to Leftovers on Bronzong, and that was not the source. That kind of put me in a shit position against um, Burst, very well tech Scarf Sneasel. Um, and I didn't play around that very well in um, in Game 3. So yeah, ended up losing that one 2-1. So we're not off to a good start. Week 2, we had a bye, so no one to play there. Week three, we're up against Joey. Uh, we also lose this one, one, two. So not going too good for your boy at the moment. Um, he had like a Snorlax team. Uh, Victini, Zamazanta, Rotom Wash, Duraludon, Zarud, Snorlax, Aerodactyl, Runarigus, Togepi, Impidimp, Pinsa. Um, he brought Victini. He brought Zarud, Snorlax, Runarigus, and Togepi. Um, I kind of thought he would bring the... Um, a belly drum Snorlax, and he did. And so I kind of like flow charted this sort of um, uh, Spectria Haze you know, offensive support set, and it did really well, uh, game one. But then game two, he went a bit, he went a lot faster, and I, I he just shut me down. Um, and he played really well and just stalled my ability to get any sort of momentum in, in game two or game three. Uh, any interesting texts on here? No, like Dragonite was one. Dragonite and Spectria were like my main max options this week. Um, like I had coaching on Mian Shao to just get heaps of uh, um, uh, boosts onto my Dragonite. That was sort of, that was sort of the idea there. Um, but yeah, this was like Morgrim's first and last week, um, and then I traded him uh, after this week. Um, so week four, we're up against Gumi. Um, it's probably been the closest set so far. It was even though it was an O2 loss, um, both games came down to one v one Pokemon, and um, and Gumi's Pokemon lived on on barely any health. So um, I went with my uh, Colossal Strat. Um, let's find out what Gumi's team was. Gumi had Kyrum, uh, the base form, Tapu Koko, Lando I, Gigalith, Tegetic, Talonflame, Thieble, uh, Reuniclus. Persian case, DLX Mianfu. Um, even though I had, I think this was more of a show and tell here with the um, Colossal. I think my actual strat was um, 
uh, more built around um, oh, Maxing, Maxing Bronzong. That's right. Um, so had Choice Band Mian Xiao and, and Rillaboom to kind of um, uh, get some, some damage off and then trying to uh, get uh, defense and special defense boosts with um, Bronzong for, for, for a, to, to bulk out late game. Um, and it just didn't quite go. I had Colba Berry here and then, like, what did I need Colba Berry for? Like, I didn't really need Colba Berry. That should have been... Um, that should have been a ghost resist berry. Um, so yeah, there were uh, some mistakes there. I, I didn't know that Kyram got got shadow ball, so that was um that was a big issue there. Um, choice ban, yeah, uh, Mian Chao was good. Like it got some, some big KOs, but then it was kind of locked into a shit move going into the end game, and he Gumi kind of um attacked around it once I was locked into something that wasn't super advantageous for me. Um, week five. We're up against my man, Dan, the Stout Man Gaming. Um, and it was another loss. So uh, week five, and I haven't got a single win yet. Um, I did catch Dan off uh, game one. It was um, Mian Xiao Bronzong lead. Um, and the idea was to uh, set Trick Room up and then um, and, and coaching it. While it set trick room up and then max it, bring in the um, uh, colossal with room service so it underspeeds my heat proof, not um, not levitate Bronzong, and then I could bulldoze, get the weakest policy proc, and go from there. And it did it did okay. Um, game one, I, I got the win. Game two, um, the I think it was the. Um, what was his team? He had um, oh, the Volcanion. He had a Volcanion that, that kind of did a lot of work. And then game 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 three, he had this Coma uh, Mo 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 in the back um, that was just like four attacks and Citrus Berry, I think it was. And um, yeah, and um, it just uh, had really good coverage across the board on against my team. Um, oh yeah, and he had haze on that Volcanion, so that kind of um, fucked over my bronze on in, in one of the games. Um, so yeah, lost that one, one, two, not looking good. Going into week six, I'm starting to feel down on myself. We're up against Dina. Dina had a really especially uh, offensive team. Not a lot of physical attackers. She had Blastoise G-Max, Venusaur G-Max, so she had all the chip damage as well. Uh, Raichu, Kanto, Torkoal, Comfy, Meow, Stick, M, Magmorta, which has Redirection, uh, Drampa, Scolipede, Kabutops, Munflax. Actually, she had three Redirectors. She had um, uh, Raichu, Blastoise, and Magmorta all have um, Follow Me. So, finally got my first win. Um, game one, I won with uh, Surf Dragonite, Colossal, and then... Um, I think I might have had uh, Lilip Spectria in the back or Lilip Bronzong in the back. Um, uh, game two, I thought, okay, I can lead Quillfish and get an Aqua Jet off into my Dragonite. And because um, I identified that Raichu was Scarfed and then go from there. But she um, ended up having Follow Me on her Scarf Quillfish, uh, on her Scarf. Um, Raichu, so that kind of totally uh, fucked up that game. And then game three, um, I just played a, a lot better. I decided to uh, stop playing like an asshole, and because I, yeah, was you know pissed off that I wasn't winning any games, so I was just maxing cold turn mine. Game three, I decided not to do that, and I had a very convincing win. Game three, um, so yeah, that was that was good. Lilith was really good this game. I think that was like what the most surprising thing on this team was the Lilith. I had um like a full like a bulky offensive bronze on without trick room. Um and that was pretty cool as well. Physical colossal was definitely the call here because it meant I could run less offensive investment um to get KOs on things like Max Venusaur. Um, and I could run more bulk, which came in came in clutch. Um, Cause game one, I clicked Surf with Dragonite and 
uh, Max Rockfall into the Raichu, but Raichu used Electro Web, which means now my Dragonite didn't outspeed the Blastoise. Blastoise got a water attack off into Colossal, didn't kill it, and I got a um, I, I still got to get my chip damage off. And then after that, it was just about stalling out with Dragonite, Lilith, and, and Bronzong. Um, so yeah, finally decided not to play like an asshole. Um, and yeah, it paid off. Then uh, week seven, up against Matt, the you know the draft league that was named after, he had a um, Marshadow, Thundee Eye, Katana, Vol, Corona, Crobat, Inteleon, Electabuzz, which gets following me, uh, Copperaja, Obstagoon, Executor A, and Cubo. Um, so I felt that his best option into I think he had yeah he had Inteleon, but he didn't bring Inteleon. Um, because it just gets dunked on by, by um, Rillaboom, which um, it's kind of like what I said before. Like I need to bring Rillaboom into these matchups, but then people don't end up bringing uh, that Pokemon. But Rillaboom was one of my max options here. Ran the Life Orb set, um, you know, sort of standard Colossal spread. Um, oh yeah, uh, so I'm. Against this team, I, I mainly went for the, the, the Trick Room sort of strat here um, of uh, bulldozing into the Colossal for weakness policy. And then late game, once Trick Room was over, I would Aqua Jet into it um, to get not the weakness policy because that's already been activated, but just to get the Steam Engine proc. And um, then I could go fast late game. Um, so yeah, Yawn Pressure was really good here from the, from the uh, War Turtle. Just trying to think, what were the main ones I brought? Like, I think, I don't think Persian came, and I don't think Tapu Bulu came, uh, sorry, Rillaboom came. I think it was Colossal, uh, War Turtle, Bronzong, and Dragonite were my main brings here. Um, Dragonite's really good, was really good for me this season. Uh, just so bulky and hit so hard, and still able to proc that Colossal. So, yeah, that was uh, week seven. Week eight, we went up against Tay, but it was a forfeit win. Um, we'll still go through his team and kind of why I, why I chose what I did. Um, so Tay had Mew, Urshifu, uh, Single Strike. That's why I brought um, Wigglytuff. Um, and then Clefable, Dracovish, Rabombi, Escavalier, Jellicent, Dragalge, Lurantis, Hippopotas, and Combusken. So yeah, um, Wigglytuff felt Quite nice here. I ran the Babiri Berry with Max Defense. Quite nature. I was going to try and get this up in Trick Room. Um, and so that would let me um, uh, dunk on the Urshifu. What did I have? Shadow Ball, Dazzling Gleam, Fire Blast. So dunk on the Urshifu, dunk on the Dracovish, dunk on the Rabombi, dunk on the Escavalier, Jellicent, um, Lurantis. So yeah, that Jigglypuff. Uh, Wigglytuff felt really good uh, this game. Um, I don't think I had a way to proc the weakness policy. I think it was Max it. Oh, sorry. No, weakness policy over here. Um, yeah, and the Bibiru Berry just let me live attacks from, from the Escavalier. Not that it ever happened. Um, finally busted out the Life Dew on the War Turtle. That would have been cool, but that never happened. Um, uh, Scarf. Um, Persian. I can't remember why I did that. I think I just really wanted the um, Icy Wind Speed Control. And then, like, again, this offensive support um, slash support Spectria. Will-O-Wisp was for, like, sucker punching Urshifus. Um, and so I could, like, Icy Wind to make sure that, like, there was no Scarf. And then I could just Will-O-Wisp into it. Um, in Prison Trick Room, Bronzong felt really good because um, Tay had quite a, a Trick Room heavy team. But yeah, didn't end up playing that game, so I got the 2-0 win. Um, week 9 up against Krabby Snail, and uh, Rillaboom went in this game. I think I just led War Turtle Rillaboom both games, and then I had Spectria and um, Colossal in, in the back. Still Max Colossal, don't think I ever self-propped the, the weakness policy. Um, it was more there. It, it just got the chip damage late game, which was really good. Um, so I uh, clicked Razor Leaf with Choice Band, and um, I think I Oko'd Inteleon, which was 
a Max Intellion, I should say, which is really funny because Razor Leaf is not normally seen as a good move. So this made me a believer in Razor Leaf, and I think I ran it pretty much every single set after this. Um, yeah, so I ran the Choice Band set there. That was good. Uh, I don't think there was anything else that was particularly strange. Um, what do you have? He had uh, Jirachi, Whimsicott, Entei, Terrakion, Mr. Mime, and, um, Inteleon G-Max, Zorark, Zygarde, 10%, Spiritomb, Chinchino, and Pseudo Wudo. And he brought uh, Jirachi, Whimsicott, Entei, Terrakion, Mr. Mime, and Inteleon. Um, so, why did I have Shadow Ball? Must have been just like to be able to get a super effective hit on Jirachi. Um, body press was really nice here, especially if I got um, max steel spikes off with Colossal, um, and it just kind of like helped me dunk on that Terrakion. Um, but yeah, the only real interesting tech there was the, um, uh, was the Razor Leaf. That was cool. Okay, so because of that, uh, I'm not into finals yet. Or in the playoffs yet, I uh, have a wild card match against my week six opponent, uh, Dina. Um, so I am bringing the uh, Leap again. Um, how is this different? So I didn't bring Dragonite this time, and I didn't bring Quilkish. Um, I brought. Uh, I didn't think I brought Rillaboom last time. Yes, yeah, so I brought Rillaboom this time, which is like a bit strange going into what she had, um, but. I also brought the uh, War Turtle this time over the Quillfish. Um, so I just really like the uh, the AV Rillaboom with Snarl. That felt um, really nice into, into her team. And since it's quite fast, um, Rillaboom's quite fast, I, uh, I thought it would uh, outspeed most things. Um, but she ended up running a lot more speed than I thought she was. Like, I think this speed was to outspeed something, speed creeping my thing, but I think she ended up going like max, max speed, timid Venusaur or something like that. So that didn't end up working in my favor. I stuck with the physical Colossal. I think the exact same spread last time. Um, I went more of a defensive Bronzong this time, still with the Ockerberry, but I just chucked Trick Room on there. And again, Bulldoze to um, proc weakness policy in Trick Room. Um, the Lumberry was for Nuzzle Raichu, that's right. Snail Mudshot, Shadow Ball, will o -Wisp. And um, yeah, brought very similar set on my... Um, I had Sandstorm on this last time to help with like Torkoal Sun. Um, but this time I opted to go a little bit more offensive, hoping I could get one or two um, uh, Storm Drain procs. And if I got that, I was actually going to max the Elite. But still, I ended up maxing Colossal in both games. Um, and yeah, I think the she ran physical G-Max Blastoise, which was a good call because it kind of put some of my calcs out. But I missed some Will-O-Wisps as well onto that Blastoise once I identified it, which kind of fucked me off a bit. Um, but Lulip did work as, again, just putting pressure onto the um, Blastoise and not letting it get off its uh, max cannonades. Um, don't think I brought War Turtle. I think it was my two grass types, Spectria, Colossal came. Maybe Bronzong came one game and Spectria came one game. Yeah. So anyway, we win that 2-0, which is which was really good. Uh, we get our two trades now. So I got rid of the Quillfish and the Mian Xiao for the Hitmon Top and the Avalug. Um, so we're up against Gumi. Um, Gumi is a big fan of Avalug, and he actually thought I was going to bring it. Um, and Hitmontop felt really good into his team. So let's have a look at his team again. Uh, Gumi had the uh, Kyrim, Tapakoko, Landorus, Gigalith, Tegetic, Talonflame, Thebel, the Uniclus, Persian, Steelix, Mianfu. The, um, oh, what gave me curry last time? Like the Kyrim gave me curry, and so did the Gigalith. So that's why this um, uh, this Hitmontop set was really nice. I had... Um, Intimidate was good into the um, uh, Landorus. Uh, it wasn't the Therian form, so you know it's generally more specially offensive. But um, his only way to really hit it well, super effectively, was with Max Airstream. So the the, the Intimidate was super nice there. Had triple axle for it. Uh, close combat 
for the um, uh, what was it? Close combat for the Chiron. Um, and then I had Bullet Punch to activate the weakness policy on the Wiggly Tough, which uh, this, this didn't end up coming. Um, I think I brought some variation of Hitmon Top Spectria, Rillaboom, War Turtle, and Bronzong each game. Um, I ended up maxing Spectria, even though it was Focus Sash. It just ended up being in a really good position. Uh, I got Intimidates off, I got Snarls off, I got Wisps off. Um, I also had like the, the Grassy Seed bronze on was super good because they just instantly got a plus one to um to defense and let me just body press the crap out of stuff. Um so yeah, that was um that was like the, the four I, I brought. Um none of them were really super duper good max candidates. Um I think Hit on top could have been maxed, even though it's like quite defensive. Uh, it still had some attack investment on it, um, and just had good good moves. So I could boost its defense, I could boost its attack, and then I could get um, uh, max hail storms off, especially off into that Mandarus. Um, so yeah, ended up winning that uh, 2-0, So that was good. So we're into the semi-finals, uh, two wins away from finally being a champion. Um, so we went up against Sakimoto. And I got to bring the Avalux. This is one week I actually did take advantage of the, the um, uh, oh, what's it? The legacy moves, other than than follow me and and toxic. Um, so I had Swagger on Bronzong, and then I know his team was um, like even his slowest Pokemon was still faster than like a, um, than than anything I could have done on Avalug. Um, so own tempo was good because Saki had the uh, Incineroar. Um, so that would normally be quite good into a physical Pokemon like Avalug. So we had the Rillaboom, Rillaboom G-Max. So we were, you no know, Rillaboom matchups there. Reggie Lecky, Incineroar, Primarina, Mamoswine, Concordeur, Noivern, Umbreon, Aegislash, Gotharita, and Wobbuffet. He ended up bringing um, Rillaboom G-Max, but he never actually brought it to battle. Uh... Did he have Reggie Lecky? He had Incineroar, Primarina, Mamoswine. He had Conkledur and he had Umbreon. Um, so that Umbreon was was kind of um, was kind of fucked. And I, I uh, made sure I targeted that down real early. Um, had some interesting stuff this set. So like I said, I had the Swagger into the Own Tempo Avalug. And then I couldn't be intimidated because Own Tempo blocks Intimidate. I had the, um, the special Colossal G-Max, which was... Um, also went off in game one. Um, Rillaboom and Dragonite and Hitmontop were just really good pivot, really good pivot ones. Um, so Dragonite also had the ability to hit Aqua Jet. I went a lot more bulk, um, but Thunder Punch still rocked uh, Primarina. Like it's a base 75 move off Adamant 60 attack um, Dragonite. So it wasn't doing a lot of damage really, um, but it's did like 75% or something to the Primarina, so that was really nice. Um, Rillaboom made it hard for Primarina to check the Colossal and um, also made it hard for the Mamoswine to check the Colossal. So that was, uh, Rillaboom was, was really big this game too. Um, Eject Button was was really good in setting up Trick Room for Bronzong, uh, for, for Avalug. Um, the Intimidate pressure was really good, so yeah. Um, Avalug popped off on its first week and then... Um, uh, um, him on top was, was super pivotal as well. All right, we're into the grand final. We're up against Ty. So let's have a look at Ty's team. So Ty had a really bulky team, like sort of similar to mine. My team's quite bulky, but his was probably even bulkier. So we had Tapu Fini, Glastria, Zygarde 50%, Porygon 2, Driftlim, Registeel, Magma, Pincurchin, Licky Licky, Drapion, and Dotler. So he bought uh, Tapu Fini, Glastria, Zygarde, Porygon 2, Magma. What is the last one? Um, Pinkerton, no, Licky Licky Drapion. He might have made some trades actually. Uh, got, uh, he had Squirtle in the playoffs. Maybe it was Aromatase. Maybe he brought Aromatase. Um, so, yeah, so really bulky team. Um, so, what I wanted to do was, uh, I brought 
toxic on Ronzong, which is kind of counterintuitive with his tap and Benny. But I had Rillaboom to sort of um, uh, set up grassy terrain and let me um, get toxic off with, um, with Ronzong. So I didn't run max speed Rillaboom. If I wanted to lead Rillaboom, um, I had uh, 29 speed EV. So if he was um, 31 speed uh, IVs, I would get the grassy terrain up. But it would also give me information, like if he was min speed Tapu Fini. Um, so yeah, so that was um, that was pretty cool. No fake out because I had two fake out mons. I had fake out will uh, hip on top and and um, Persian. I didn't end up using my fast mons at all. Uh, Hay Spectra would have been super handy, especially against that Tapu Fini. But anyway, that's where we are. Um, and then I had this Persian Alola, which was like very physically defensive with fur coat. Um, so it was actually quite good at at putting a stop to um, a Glastria because I could uh, intimidate and parting shot cycle between the two, between fur coat and the defense investment. Like Glastria was doing nothing, and then as soon as I got an intimidate up, it was doing nothing. So yeah, I um, actually went with eject pack this time on hit on top because in game two against Saki, um, he just got the target around hit on top, and hit on top didn't actually. Um, get to switch out as early as, I, as I'd like in game two. But this let me click close combat and, and get the switch out uh, straight away. Um, game three, that was really pivotal. Instead of uh, fake out trick room, I, I clicked trick room, but then clicked close combat. So uh, he got two attacks off into me. I knew it wasn't going to kill my bronze on. It was too bulky. And so then I got the I got the switch out and got the bring in Avalug. I had trick room up and then I was just ready to go. I could get iron defense up. Um, yeah, so that was, um, so my plan was to kind of, um, get Toxics up on his bulky mon. So I'm looking at P2, Zygarde, and, uh, Tapu Fini, uh, just because I didn't, they could just stall. They could stall forever. And Toxics normally not a good strat in BGC, but in this, um, against this specific team, I think Toxic was a, was a good bring. Um. Just, yeah, just because they couldn't click there, click recover, click protect leftovers, click draining kiss, that sort of stuff. Um, so, yeah, wanted to get that that up and going. So Toxic was really important. Um, and so the other idea was to get Bronzong really bulky too. So it was really hard to KO. So with Iron Defense, uh, Max Steel Spikes, and Max Quakes. Um Avalug was my max option this whole game uh, because if if it went one for one with Glastria, especially in Trick Room, it generally won uh, just because it has more defense. Um, we both ran AV bulky ice type. Um, and I think we were very similar in coverage, coverage uh, body slam, high horsepower. Um, icicle, or ice move. Uh, I think he may have had still, yeah, he did have still spikes. He got still spikes up on um, Tapu Fini. Um, so game one, there was a very uh, unfortunate burn on Rillaboom early game off a tri attack. Um, and since my thing was target around the Tapu Fini and then let Rillaboom beat it one on one in the end, um, yeah, that, um, that kind of put a, a damper on that. Um, game two was very close. There were some misses on both parties, but uh, from, from both parties. And um, yeah, I ended up clutching out that. And then game three, I'm pretty sure was was much more in my favor the whole time, purely because of that turn one play where I didn't fake out trick room. I went close combat trick room. And then I was just ahead the whole game. And um, we had a bit of trouble with um, actually playing online and genning our Pokemon purely because um, uh, something, I don't know, wrong with the game wasn't, wasn't, al wasn't allowing you to trade the, the two horses. Um, so we actually ended up building in game and that wasn't too bad except that there was one turn where um, I had Avalug and Bronzong out against uh, Glastria and something um, and Avalug got like a... Um, Max steel spike off 
which got a defense boost to Bronzong, and then Bronzong got the body press. But because he didn't have zero speed Glastria, um, I got the I got the KO on there straight away. Um, not that I think it really mattered because I had so much defense built up on Bronzong and Avalug, like it would have just been chip damage. But like there was still that potential for you know a crit to happen or something like that. Um, so now, finally the champion. Woohoo, go me! Going, I'm going to go through each of the Pokemon and kind of give them a bit of a rating. So. Uh, first Pokemon, I was going to go in tier order, but really we're going to start with the, with the star of the show, and that was um, Colossal. Uh, he was my kill leader. Um, this is a bit of a contradictory line, but the whole draft both did and did not revolve around um, Colossal. Because I had such good Pokemon outside of Colossal, that all that, that a lot of them also helped Colossal. Um, like, Colossal didn't need to come each week. You know, there was probably some weeks where I didn't even, where I brought it and I didn't need to bring it. Um, things like Billaboom, things like Spectria, Persian, Hitmontop, like, so I had a, and I didn't even use it in the grand final, um, because it had a real shit matchup, rip. Um, so yeah, it, it was both a colossal team, but it was also was not a colossal team, um, which I think uh, kind of helped me, you know, win out in the end. I wish I had made those trades earlier in the season. I think I would have been in a much better position. Um, the chip damage is stupid good. Not necessarily Colossal's a good Pokemon, but the chip damage from Colossal um, is is good. Same with Blastoise, Charizard, and Venusaur. So, um, and there's a lot more. There's a lot less good Rock types to to kind of soak up that that Rock damage. Whereas it's a lot of good Water types. There's a lot of good Grass types, and there's a lot. A lot of good uh, fire types as well so I think Colossal probably has the best chip move out of the lot purely because there's not as many good rock types um, I'm glad that my very first draft of uh, Gen 8 my very last draft of Gen 8 had Colossal I did not touch him in draft league in between that um, and I give this guy a 10 out of 10 rating um, if used properly uh, yeah because that that chip damage is just it's, it's it's stupid. It should have never been in the game. It was just dumb. But anyway, it was in the game. And yeah, there's my Colossal Raid. Next, I had Spectria. Um, Spectria had a really good ability to snowball your opponents. You know, it has that, um, uh, whatever its ability is, it, it gives it plus one to special attack every time it gets a KO. Um, and it doesn't require speed control, unlike Glastria. Glastria kind of needs Trick Room to function at its best. Um, Spectre is already kind of there with base 130 attack. It more needs um, damage reduction uh, to, to, to help it stay around a little bit longer. Things like Screen, Snarl, Intimidate, Will-O-Wisp, um, which it gets a lot of those moves itself. Um, support sets are very good. Offensive sets are very good. But really, it's, it's mixed offensive and support sets that are just unreal. Um, having Shadow Ball as your attack, maybe a coverage move, um, often Snarl. And then um, whatever you need to support your team, Taunt, uh, Will-O-Wisp, or, or Haze seem to be the big three one. Its lack of coverage is, is kind of rubbish. I did look at uh, trying to run maybe a, a coaching set onto it with like double kick or something, but no, that was that was a big no. Um, it's Yeah, so its lack of coverage can, can bite it in the butt. Um, I give this one a 9 out of 10. Uh, so that was one tier one. Next tier one was um, Rillaboom. Um, it covered a lot of uh, Colossal's weakness as well. So it's two big ones being um, ground and water. Um, didn't really cover the rock weakness, but that's fine. Uh, I thought that Rillaboom was going to be a lot more splashable. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it was nowhere near as splashable onto a team as I thought it was. Unlike regular VGC, like you can just kind of slap this thing on a team and it, it'll do well. I felt that less so. When people were kind of, kind of specifically prepping for it, it felt like a wasted spot, like about half the time, um, because my opponents just would not bring what was um, what Rillaboom was good into. Like Matt, for example, didn't bring Inteleon into the um, colossal matchup, which uh, yeah. So I just had what felt like a, a dead slot on my team, uh, but when it did pop off, it it popped off especially with Razor Leaf. So I didn't really give this thing a rating because when it, when my opponent brought something that it was good into and that was good into my Colossal, 
it would be 10 out of 10. But then like against Matt, it was a 1 out of 10. So yeah, it's a bit hard to rate it. Um, yeah, this guy was really good as well. So uh, unflinchable Cole Proker. Um, would be better in a um, non-legacy move format where Rage Powder is more the go rather than um, Follow Me, because then you can do like Safety Goggles, um, Aqua Jet. Uh, it's unflinchable, similar to the Dragapult, but for different reasons. This one is unflinchable because of its ability rather than its typing. Um, but it was also a great mon in its in its own right. Like I could run Weakness Policy on this. I could do like Life Orb sets. I could run Scarf or Banded sets. Um, you could go Special or Physical. Um, it wasn't just a cold proper, and I, I did get to run it a few weeks as um, as its own mon, and not as just a, a side piece to Colossal. Um, yeah, it's great max candidates. You know, between its abilities, its stats, its coverage, and stab air stream, it's just stupid. Um, and like, it has got a four by times weakness to ice, but like, if you kill your opponent first, then it's not too much of an issue which um, I got to do a lot of the time. It's like, did you really want to bring an ice type into a colossal matchup? Probably not, um, but people did anyway. Rip. Uh, next one, hit one top. Uh, this was the glue I needed all season, but did not have. Um, the roll compression that this scene did for me was, um, was extremely valuable. Um, just having the, the fighting type as well as fake out and intimidate in one mon, as well as the ultimate weakness policy proker. Like, yeah, I should have I should have not gone with Nian Xiao. I should have gone with um, Hit One Top, especially after I traded Morgrim for for Persian. Like, I had that that speed to kind of play with after that. Um, but I'm glad I did end up getting it because it was a uh, clutch throughout my playoff run. Um, it is the ultimate weakness policy proker with. Vacuum Wave, Bullet Punch, Mac Punch, Sucker Punch. Like, you can um, uh, proc a lot of weakness policies with this guy. Uh, unfortunately, it's not in Scarlet and Violet. Otherwise, I would probably have this on nearly every single team. Um, 10 out of 10. This mod is just so good. Um, my other Tier 3 in Bronzong. It was part of my Series 9 Cool Call team, like I said. Um, it was uh, probably the most consistent speed control Pokemon in my team, and that was setting Trick Room. Uh, sometimes I ran Rock Tomb on it, but you know, very rarely did I did I click it. Um, and it was also good at facilitating my damage output, be that through Swagger or be that through uh, uh, proccing a weakness policy. Um, and it was still very offensively present thanks to, to Body Press. That move has been a godsend for defensive Pokemon. Um, and it's not broken, like 80 base power, uh, fighting move that works off the defense. I think it's it's quite balanced. Um, so yeah, give this guy an eight out of ten. Uh, next is War Turtle. Um, like being the Legacy League, uh, this was my Follow Me user. Uh, could also proc um, Colossal with Aqua Jet, so that was super handy. I was hoping to get Blast Toys, so then I had like double damage. I could um, like get G Max Cannonade off or um, the, the coals off, but it didn't make it back to me. Thanks, Dina. Um, and it had its its support move pool is just is stupid good between yawn, uh, fake out, follow me, uh, life due, helping hand. Um, it was it was just it had a bit of a four four move slot syndrome. Um, had icy wind as well, which I brought a fair bit. Um, and it actually got quite a few kills. Not. Um, because it you know, hit incredibly hard. I just like something would have three health left and I just aqua jet into it. Um, so for the tier, it was tier, uh, tier four, like it was 10 out of 10. It was so good for me. Um, and no, it didn't come much in playoffs. Like it was, yeah, it was super good. Um, next, we have the Persian Alola. Um, I would have liked to have used this more. It came a lot on teams, but I just like. Uh, didn't really hit the field. Um, has a really good annoying move pool. Things like Snarl, uh, Parting Shot, Fake Out, um, Foul Play, uh, Trick. So it was 
it's very much a Pokemon that I like using, and it, because of its ability, uh, Fur Coat, it just does, it just can, can take some physical hits that really it has no right taking. Um, I could have used this as a Proctor Colossal with, with Water Pulse, but I felt it was too risky. Like, if I hadn't got myself in confusion, like, would have that been, been good? Probably not. Um, uh, yeah, I would have liked to have used it more, but yeah, just felt like other modes on my team or other mons were, were probably better. So uh, for this season, I give it a 6 out of 10. Um, Avalaga, but really, you know, it came to two games out of three potential games, and it was like the king of those games. So I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 purely for the games I played it in. Um, it, yeah, so I picked this up. It bolstered my, my Trick Room mode, um, and it was super invaluable for my my semi-finals and grand finals um, and I only ran a B on it um, could have probably won weakness policy on it in against um, uh, is it uh, who did I play in the final was it tag tie tie could have used weakness policy on it but I think like a B was was kind of good enough um, if I had a bit more time with it like him on top could have been a good policy proc for it um, yeah, so I, I, I rate Avalog, especially in the max format. Like, it has really shit special defense, but you can make up for that with AV and max. So, yeah. Uh, Wiggly Tuck, it came a few weeks. Uh, felt like just sort of a, you know, I have a good dragon type, have a good steel type. Uh, let's just get a, a random fairy and chuck it on there. Um, so that that's what it kind of felt like to me. But, it, you know, it did have its role in a few of the games. Um, I, yeah, I wish I, like, again, would have liked to have brought, uh, would have liked to have brought it more. Um, it did offer Perish Song and Intimidate Deterrent, um, but, like, that never came into account. Um, and it, it did it did fine when I bought it. Like, I think with some EV adjustments, it could have done better in week one. And then... It was definitely going to be my main option against um, Tay. Um, with that Babiri Seri, Babiri Berry set. Um, but yeah, so. And then lastly, um, for a tier 6, I think Avala, uh, not Avalug, Lilip is a 10 out of 10. Uh, it only came to one matchup, which was, which was Dina both times, um, just because I wanted to. Um, I didn't want her to be able to get the, um, oh, what was it called, uh, Max Catenade up. Um, and it was a fine low tier mon to help protect Colossal. There's probably one mon that was like literally just good on a Colossal team, probably wouldn't be using it anywhere else outside of a little cup draft league. Um, and with Eevee Light, this thing was like stupid bulky. Um, yeah, I give this guy a 10 out of 10, 100%, so good. Um, so reflection on the team. Um, I started the season really rough with loss after loss. I think if I had have done those trades earlier on in the season, um, I could have been in a bit of a better position. Uh, and, yeah, they felt just like much better pieces on my team than what the um, uh, Mian Xiao and the, and the Pullfish did. Um, chip damage is stupid. Just being able to get up and just get free damage for four turns, like... I think in VGC, if you get the chips damage every turn and they've and you've burnt their max out, um, that is the equivalent of um, that's for like one and a third Pokemon damage, just done. Um, so yeah, um, this was uh, the slide from the PRs at the beginning. Um, of the season, not enough Dragapult. Uh, Bronzong not worth it. Bronzong totally worth it. Um, uh, but yeah, like like I said, like someone was obsessed with it being a colossal team, but there was like good Pokemon outside of that in like Dragonite, Spectria, Willaboom, and Wartortle. So yeah, I felt the team um, was a bit shaky to start with, but we got there in the end. And the, um, yeah, I, I, th I think the Mons I had in the end was, was really, I wish I had have had the whole season. I think it would have made my uh, run a little bit easier. 
A uh, bit of a reflection on the format. I didn't take advantage of the legacy moves uh, and the restricted slash mythicals at all. I had no restricted, had no mythical. Um, I pretty much only used follow me. Um, and then what were the... And then one week I used Toxic, one week I used Swagger. I didn't even use Tailwind on, on, Dragapult, on, on Dragonite. Um, I, I don't like that uh, moves like Follow Me are so widespread. Um, and, you know, for a, a Max League, like uh, Tailwind being so widespread. Um, maybe that's just me being used to you know, playing standard sort of VGC and, and having the tools that are available in that generation. But, um, yeah, wasn't wasn't super keen on, like, everything getting getting follow me. Um, but Colossal was, was still keen. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Matt and the other MBL admins for having me during that, throughout the season. Uh, I'd also like to thank Wakeman and Masto for letting me run ideas past them, especially through the latter half of the season. When I started to get my mojo back. Um, that's it, guys. See you all in with more Scarlet and Violet videos.